I'm not going to get so much into the details of this passages or, or the details so much right now. This is just about telling you what we're doing, telling you why I'm doing this. And from, from here on, you know, I'm going to try every couple of weeks to, uh, to update you on, on where we're going, uh, what, we're, what we're learning, and how we're being convicted. There's just so much in this. And I just see in this that I don't want to be blind or short-sighted. I don't want to forget my purification from my past sins. I don't want to be useless. I don't want to be unfruitful. This scripture tells us that if these characteristics or qualities uh, from verse 5 through 7, if those are not in us, we're blind. We're short-sighted. We have forgotten what Christ has done in our lives. One last thing about that, okay? Verse 4 tells us, at the end of verse 4 it says, having escaped the corruption of this world. We've escaped this world. Why would we turn back? We've escaped this world to have a new and better life, a life in Christ Jesus, a life that he would have us live. And these listed here is what that life looks like. That life is a life of faith, a life of moral excellence, a life of the true knowledge of Jesus Christ, a life of self-control, and perseverance, a life of godliness, a life of brotherly kindness, and a life of love. I don't want to forget those things. I don't want to go back into the captivity that was, a, that was this world. I've already escaped once. Why would I go back to that? Because of this, because of this, I am determined to have these qualities. I am determined to be increasing in these qualities. I am determined to practice these qualities. There's a promise in this. Did you, did you catch the promise the first time? Let me just read part of this, okay? For if these qualities are yours and increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't that mean that if they are in us, we are useful? Wouldn't that mean that if they are in us, we are fruitful? If they are not in us, we're useless. If they're not in us, we're unfruitful. I don't want to be those things. I want to be useful. I want to be fruitful. And we are those things by doing, by becoming these listed here. The next part there, that and the other promise is uh, verse 10. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. The moment... We forget about these things. The moment that we stop caring, the moment that we are content, is our downfall. It's like climbing. Uh, when, you, when you're climbing up a hill, as long as you keep your momentum going forward, you're okay. I've noticed that when you stop, and rest, and look back. Oh, okay, I'll try to go forward again. Oops, lost my step, lost my footing. I don't want to lose my footing. I don't want to fall. I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. And there was a promise in this. This promise that if we are practicing these things, verse five, with applying all diligence, Later he says, applying all the more diligence in practicing these things, in increasing in these things, we will continue to grow in our Lord 
Jesus Christ. We will continue to be effective saints of God, effective instruments, effective ambassadors of him to this world. The more we practice and grow in these things, the brighter his light in us will shine for others to see. Jesus tells us we are the light of this world. We are the salt of the earth. Light dispels darkness, and that is what we are supposed to be doing. But unfortunately, the church as a whole is not. We've allowed contentment, contentment, sorry. We've allowed contentment to creep into our churches, to creep into our hearts, into our families. We've allowed tolerance guide what our teachings are. And to me, it's unacceptable. To me, I cannot be that. That is not what light does. Light does not save the darkness. Okay, we'll leave this way, this area over here, just a little bit shaded, a little bit light. No. There are no shadows in the light. We are the salt of the earth. We're supposed to preserve it. We're supposed to give it flavor. But instead of giving it extra flavor, we're becoming less tasty. We're losing our seasoning by tolerating things that the Bible speaks against. By being content in the place that we are, we're becoming tasteless. Jesus tells us what happens when we become tasteless. We're thrown out. We're good for nothing except to be trampled underfoot by men. We're not useful in the kingdom of God if we are tasteless. If our light goes out, unless we turn it back on, we're not useful. I will be a light. I will be salty. I will be useful. I will be fruitful. And I will grow closer to my Lord every day. Thank you, and I just, I pray that you will see these things as well. I pray that you will join me in helping push the body of Christ forward to him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I come before you now. Lord, I just, I thank you for, for leading me to these passages and for giving me this, this calling, this, this holy passion, this righteous rage in a way, to be on fire for you and to dislike the contentment that we have right now, Lord. Lord, help me, help the pastors across the world, help the church leaders and every individual Christian across this entire planet, Lord, every single member of your body. Help us, help us to be true to you. Lord, help us to become what you want us to be. Help us to shine bright in this universe. Help us to stay very salty, Lord. Help us to preserve this world. Don't let Satan water us down. Help us to stand firm on your truths and not give way in anything. Help us have a revival your body across this world, a great revival for you, Lord. We know that it's difficult, and we ask you to give us the strength to increase in the qualities that you have asked us to have, you've told us we need to have. Give us the strength. Give us the encouragement, Lord. Help us push each other forward. Help us lift each other up. Help us be true to you. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.